I want to thank uh, Senator Crowell and uh, the independent group for bringing forward this very important motion. Um, and I want to say that obviously Sinn Féin will be fully supporting this bill. I thank you, Minister, for being here as well and for the work that you have done on this. I also want to commend uh, MEP Lynn Boylan for all the work that she has done uh, on, on gambling to, to address it. But there is an urgent uh, need for recognition and regulation in how gambling is done. Despite what anyone will tell you, uh, we are in the grip of a problem gambling crisis. Uh, problem gambling is a condition uh, where the affected individual has continuous urge to gamble despite harmful negative consequences or indeed, and indeed a desire to stop. In Ireland you can usually tell if there's a problem with an industry when its products, with its products when the same industry begins to fund support services. We've seen the alcohol industry do, uh, already do this with the likes of Drinkaware. But in 2017, industry experts H2 Gambling Capital produced a report into global gambling losses across the world that, fo that found that we have the highest online gambling losses in the world and the third highest gambling losses overall per head. To put that in real numbers, Irish people lose around 2.2 billion a year gambling or 470 euro per adult. If you consider the number of people who wouldn't ever lay a bet, that means that there's a lot of problem gamblers losing a considerable amount of money uh, per year. However, the reality is that we do not have the exact figures for the number of problem gamblers in this state because the government refuses to do a survey that would allow us to get a full picture. This type of survey was done in 2017 for the north of Ireland, showing the rate uh, of problem gambling there to be 2.3%, nearly five times higher than in England. If we were to use that figure for the south, we have close to 100,000 problem gamblers. But if we don't have a dedicated survey for, for the whole of the island, this hinders our efforts to get the resources and the support to those who need it. This evening saw the publication of Bulletin 7 showing results specifically related to gambling from 2014 and 15 drug prevalence survey. There are already doubts being cast about its accuracy, claiming that only 0.8% of the population are problem gamblers. Despite what the gambling industry will, st will say and despite what funny tweets or billboards they erect, we need stiffer regulation and we need it urgently. It might all be a bit of crack, but we cannot let that blind us to the real hardship to hardships caused by problem gambling. If we're talking about the latest outrageous stunt, then we're not talking about the damage that's been done to those who are unable to gamble without stopping. Getting access to gambling has never been easier. All you need to do is to take out your phone to see the next five races from anywhere in the world or play virtual casino games for high stakes. There's no cash changing hands and it's easy to forget that it's not just a video game. Combined with aggressive marketing, people are more, more, more susceptible than ever to develop problem gambling hab habits, particularly teenage boys and young men. But these people are being failed by governments that have done not an awful lot around it. The Gambling Control Bill, which is supposed to address the issues around the gambling industry, has been gathering dust since 2013, despite the scale of the problem increasing. I'm not, I'm not calling for gambling to be banned. It is far past time that we see an industry properly regulated by the state. We need people to be able to watch a sporting event without being bombarded with gambling advertisements. We need children to be able to go online without being targeted by gambling ads. And we need proper protections for problem gamblers who wish to stop gambling. We need responsibility from the gambling industry. Above all, we need proper regulation. Despite the great work of highlighting the issue of problem gambling by many journalists, by advocates and by charities and by a small number of politicians, there has been a complete lack of engagement from government. Sinn Féin wants to see a gambling regulator in place. The gambling regulator should administer a problem gambling fund. The purpose of the problem gambling fund would be to help minimise problems, problem gambling and its effect and, its, and it, the functions of that would include commissioning gambling and problem gam gambling prevalence studies to developing models of best practice in prevention and treatment of problem gambling 
having regard to international experience and the views of rel relevant medical bodies and support groups. The public education and awareness ra raising programmes, the production of associated materials and resources for use by services, to distribute the funding uh, to addiction service providers and ensure service quality. The problem gambling fund should be financed by a levy or a license fee on the industry. The gambling regulator should set the rate payable subject to the approval of the minister and payment should be mandatory for all operators. It should be set at a rate that recognises some parts of the industry are also contributing to the exchequer via betting taxes, while others don't, and if possible using a formula that takes cognizance of the varying levels of harm to which different forms of gambling give rise. New Zealand offers an example of one such polluter pay style formula. Uh, there, the rate to be paid by operators is weighted based on the rates of presentation by players from the gambling subsection in question to problem gambling services and player expenditures. I used to work uh, for, for William Hill in marketing and public relations, indeed for Mecca Bookmakers many years ago. And the psychology behind getting people and targeting people to gamble is an absolute science in itself. But we really need to do something to address this. And that goes from the colours you use, from everything. I worked at it, so I know. But we really, as a government and as, a, as, a, as an Oireachtas, we need to address this urgently because, as was said by very many speakers, it is destroying lives and it will continue to destroy lives of people. I want to commend all of the high profile or, you know, sports players and all that who have come out and spoke openly. Uh, about their gambling addip addictions and the impact that it's had uh, on their lives. So again, I do want to thank uh, Gerard Crockwell and the Independent Group for facilitating this discussion and for you, Minister, as well. And you certainly have all our support across this House to do everything that's needed to put the proper regulation in place.